Hi there, I'm Matt Donnelly from Rotoballer, and we are on week number eight of the 2023 NFL season. Let's kick things off. The week eight starts and sits at the running back position. But again, before we do, make sure that you understand this is a public service announcement for all you fantasy football enthusiasts out there that I record this video on Monday. So plenty can happen between now and when we kick things off here Thursday night football. That being said, there's one way to make sure that you stay up to date, and that is heading over to the Rotoballer Discord channel, where we have experts there around the clock to help you with those fantasy football discussions. Second, after the week we just had that saw six teams on by and a plethora of injuries at the running back position, we enter week number eight not having to worry about the bye week blues. However, we still have several key injuries that we need to monitor. We are still awaiting the official word when it comes to Jerome Ford, who appeared to have suffered a high ankle injury against the Colts. If he's out any length of time, this becomes Kareem Hunt's backfield and managers will be once again scrambling to claim Pierre Strong off of waivers, the same Pierre Strong that you probably just dropped. You'll also need to monitor the health of Bijan Robinson, although I don't think it's going to do you much good because for some reason, Arthur Smith hates us, hates fantasy, and decides, hey, you know what, I'm not even going to tell you that I'm only going to give him one touch because he's not feeling too good. Anyway, I got to breathe, I got to breathe. We are also still expecting David Montgomery to be out again this week as he continues to tend to that rib injury. Rashawn Johnson, he's still in concussion protocol. Miles Sanders, he's still dealing with a groin and shoulder injury. He's coming up a bye, so there's a chance that he could be ready this week. So with that being said, I still like Chuba Hubbard a little bit more than Miles Sanders. All right, let's hit the ground running with the week eight must start, must sit players at the running back position. And we're starting things off in the city of brotherly love with DeAndre Swift taking on the Washington Commanders. Against the Dolphins, Swift managed just 15 carries for 62 yards. He also added three receptions for 13 yards. That's not great fantasy production. Luckily for him, Fantasy is a week-by-week -week proposition for him, and he gets to face a commander's defense that has allowed 113 yards per game rushing over the past six weeks. Well, Washington, they rank 13th this season when it comes to fantasy points per game surrendered to the position. Over the last four weeks, they have allowed the seventh most rushing yards. Now, I'll admit, I wasn't a big fan of that Kenneth Gainwell getting that touchdown there. That touchdown should have gone to DeAndre Swift. Basically, every rushing touchdown should belong to DeAndre Swift, mostly because I have a lot of shares of him at this point. But, you know what, I'm willing to overlook that, knowing that the Eagles will look to right a wrong against this commander's team that has allowed two rushing touchdowns in the last four weeks. My number two start of the week here at the running back position is another one of my guys. It's Isaiah Pacheco. Go get him. What are you waiting for? This week, he gets to face a Denver Broncos defense that is allowing a league-high 37.1 fantasy points per game to opposing backs. In the last four contests, that number, it jumps up to 46.78 as they have allowed six rushing scores to go along with 744 yards, two backs on the ground. And that's not even counting the four touchdowns receiving and the 207 receiving yards or the 32 receptions they also have allowed over that same period of time. Now Pacheco, he's coming off a relatively quiet week where he ran the ball just 13 times for 32 yards, but he is proven to be effective out of the backfield, hauling in four passes, including one for a touchdown. Now it's hard to believe, but Pacheco is the 14th most targeted running back in the NFL through seven weeks. And the scary thing is, he is now being used in this offense as an option in the passing game. Pacheco is not only in the top 12 when it comes to rushing yards, but he also has caught 21 of 23 passes thrown his way for 163 yards. Pacheco, even in a down week, still had a 77% rush share rate. And let's be honest, the Chiefs, they didn't really need to do a whole lot to dispose of the Chargers last week as Mahomes casually threw for about 434 yards and four scores. Another running back that you need to fire up this week is Brees Hall versus the New York Giants. Yes, we are having New York on New York crime this week. Over the last four weeks, the Giants are allowing opposing backs to average 24.9 fantasy points per game and have been run on to the tune of 584 yards and four scores over that same period of time. Hall and Jets, they are coming off a bye week, which means Hall had an entire week to continue with his rehab. That's not great news for the Giants. Back in week number five, Hall had 93 total yards and five receptions against an Eagles defense after dropping 194 total yards the previous week against the Denver Broncos. That means Hall has already been ramping up and this, this may be as close to 100% we see Brees Hall the entire season coming off that ACL injury. Now on Monday, 
It marked one year since Hall's injury. And the next four weeks, Hall is going to be facing defenses inside the top 13 when it comes to fantasy points allowed. Did I mention he's averaging six and a half yards per carry? Yeah, you can start Hall. Don't worry about it. Another running back you want a bonus running back? How about Damian Pierce this week against Carolina? Pierce had a bye week to fix whatever was going on that was going wrong with him there. And he's going to be looking to exploit a very poor Panthers run defense. A defense that is allowing 33.63 fantasy points per game thus far. The Panthers, who are also coming off a bye, have watched opposing back score 11 times on the ground and churn out 806 yards on the ground, which is the third most. And they even had a bye thrown in there. And this has happened on just 152 carries. Even with every team playing this week, Pierce already projects to be a top 24 fantasy back and worthy of a start in a very, very favorable matchup. Now, speaking of running backs that don't have as favorable matchups, Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Detroit Lions. Jacobs appears becoming more and more game ready after holding out the entire offseason there. But this week, he faces a Lions defense that leads the league with the fewest yards allowed to backs on the ground and fantasy production over the last four weeks, allowing just 7.95 fantasy points per game. They've also allowed only 176 yards rushing there in the last four weeks. Not to mention just 52 yards receiving surrendered over that same period of time, which is also the fewest in the league. Now Jacobs is coming off an 85% rush share rate himself, but all those rush attempts, they've really mounted to nothing because this Raiders offensive line and the blocking up front, it simply has not been there. Even against the Bears, which was another favorable matchup, Jacobs averages 3.2 yards per carry, which sadly is above his seasonal average of 2.9 yards per attempt. Luckily for fantasy managers, whether it's Garoppolo or Hoyer or O'Connell, the short pass game has been an extension of this Raiders run game, and that has been a benefit of Josh Jacobs for much of the season. Another sit this week is Aaron Jones versus Minnesota. So what? I'm petty. At least I can admit it here right now. A week after I said that Jones was a must start, he went out there and made me look a fool. Well, guess what? You've made the must sit list here this week, buddy. Now, I fully expect the Packers to take advantage of this Viking secondary and throw it around the field. And this comes at the expense of Aaron Jones. Now, before you start saying that Aaron Jones can be a factor in the passing game, no, he can't. Consider this. On the 2023 campaign, the Vikings are allowing just 14.92 fantasy points per game to opposing backs. That is the third fewest. At first, I was mad at Aaron Jones. Then I redirected my anger probably where it deserves to be. And that is on Matt LaFleur, who only allowed Jones to touch the ball 11 times on his return from injury. What are you thinking? Now, don't even tell me that you're thinking long term here because at 2-4, and four, those playoff aspirations, they're quickly dwindling. Now, another running back I'm sitting this week is Derrick Henry versus Atlanta. This is an interesting matchup. The last time that we saw Henry in action, he just finished rushing for 97 yards on 12 attempts, and he scored in that game. This week, he faces a very stingy Falcons run defense, a run defense that is allowing the fifth fewest fantasy points to opposing backs. And they will have zero fear when it comes to Malik Wills beating them through the air in this one. Atlanta is one of just two teams, Tampa Bay the other, that has yet to allow a rushing touchdown to a running back this season although they have allowed two receiving touchdowns now fantasy managers should welcome the fact that the recent reports suggesting that the titans are at least listening to offers for their all pro back so soon henry may be free but until then a man can only dream also perhaps maybe i'm the one to blame for all this as i predicted at the beginning of the year that henry entering his eighth season was due for regression i apologize my bad now also, Brian Robinson against the Eagles is another strong fade from this week, as Philly enters this week having allowed just 350 yards on the ground to backs and are allowing just 13.91 fantasy points per game. So let's hit the ground running with the Week 8 running back starts and sits blitz. Start DeAndre Swift versus the Commanders defense that has been good, but have allowed 113 yards rushing per game over the last four weeks. Start Isaiah Pacheco once again against one of the worst defenses in the league. Did I mention he's now catching passes too? Look out! Brees Hall is coming off a bye, close to 100%, and he's already starting to ramp up for fantasy. Damian Pierce is another solo start against the second worst run defense in Carolina. Who am I sitting? Josh Jacobs versus Detroit. Bad offensive line versus good run defense. Advantage Lions. 
Aaron Jones is sit until Matt LaFleur can get his act together. Oh, and Minnesota is also stout against the run. Regression is real for Derrick Henry, and Atlanta has allowed the fifth fewest fantasy points to running backs this season. Philadelphia, they've allowed the fourth fewest, so sit Brian Robinson as well. Now be sure to like and subscribe to our Roto Baller YouTube channel for plenty more great fantasy football analysis.